really hope you like this video. Just subscribe, like, and click the bell to be notified of more content just like this. How are you? Yeah, very good, thank good. you. Good. My, my name's Rob. How you doing, Rob? Yeah, good, good, mate. Where are you? I'm indoors. I'm, I'm in my house. You, you look like you're sort of in some tropical paradise there kind of thing, or... <laughs> Gonna show you some <laughs> <laughs> what um um how's things how, how's how's lockdown and how's it affecting you well it's um it's been a bit of a weird one to be honest um the good thing is it hasn't affected me like it has uh, affected others i'm still training in the gym um i'm still doing sessions as normal and uh it's things are still busy so where, where are you where are you training in loughborough so, Tell us about Loughborough, it looks like... Yeah, so I'm based up Loughborough, basically, the university. Um, they have uh, some amazing state-of-the-art facilities. And uh, I've basically got my whole team, all set up, based there now. Um, and it's, 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 it's truly amazing. I'm really blessed to be here. Who, who's there? What, which other fighters are there with? Does Dillian fight out there as well, yeah? Or trains out there? To train out here, but he's he now trains in Portugal. Mm -hmm. Not too sure if he wants to come back. There's been talk about him coming back and, and being based down here, but um, I'm not too sure if that's gonna if that's gonna materialize. But I'm I'm pretty much the only boxer based down here at the minute, and there's a few other people um, that have been in talks with the institution as they want to come here and be based down here also so that the covid because of the pandemic it's just kind of delayed everything so we'll sure. see what happens how, how frustrating i mean i know you had the hand injury but how frustrating has it been not being able to to fight as simple as that oh it's been it's been pretty frustrating there's been times when i just wanted to just get back into the ring i was trying to speed up the process as by eating healthy doing everything that i can and you know I just realized with this type of injury, it just takes time. And once it heals, then you'll be fine. But if you rush it, come back too quickly, um, it could affect you um, in, in a bad way. I remember when I was in Las Vegas for the Tyson Fury versus Wilder fight in February last year. And I uh, spoke to Kel Brook and he told me they happy he had the same injury. He said, don't rush it. He rushed it and he punched and he felt, um, he felt a type of twinge in his hand and he, he realized that he damaged it further and he needed more time to for it to heal. So he just said, make sure you still do the same thing I did. Um, have you been sparring with Anthony Joshua? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was, I've been sparring with, sparring with him. You know, big, big old lump, knocked him out a few times. <laughs> 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 no, yeah, yeah, we, we, we've been doing some good work. Um, AJ is a, he's a really lovely guy and we've been helping each other. Um, I've pretty much been sparring with, with him every couple, every other week. And it's, that's, it's, it's a blessing, you know, to be able to spar with a heavyweight world champion. You know, not a lot of people can say that they've done that. What have you taught him? I, told, I taught him how to move his head. <laughs> 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 Brilliant. <laughs> what? What is it? How do you compare? Because I, I mean, I know you're six foot five. When you stand up against him, are you, are you the same height as him? I'm trying to. I'm trying to think about work it out. He's obviously heavier than you, but so we're pretty much around the same same height. He's probably an inch taller. You know, if you if we were to stand side by side, you know, it's just a subtle difference. You know, you won't really notice it. If I got my platforms on, you know, you won't know. <laughs> <laughs> Don't you think? Come on, be honest. Be honest. Don't you think sometimes? Oh, do you know, I'm just going to let him have it. He's going. He's got. I'm just going to belt him one. I mean, a real good one. Just to say, <laughs> just to go. There you go, mate. <laughs> I'm the champ, mate. <laughs> the thing, boxing is like you could you could do that, but you get you're going to have to worry about what's coming back. So if that doesn't put him down, then you're going to be in some trouble. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh brilliant do you spar with Dillian yeah yeah of course of course I sparred hundreds of rounds with Dillian 
You know, Dillian has taught me a lot. That guy is, uh, he's got a mean left hook. He's lead hand, there's, there's dynamite in that, in that arm of his. You know, you don't want to get hit with those shots. It's like very disorientating. But he's, um, he's very intelligent. Boxing IQ wise. Great experience for you. Yeah, of course. This is, you know, not a lot of people get to say they've sparred with these, with these um, top fighters. No, at least I I got something for the books. I'm I'm really pleased about that to be honest. You know, this it's what's that's it's the best that it could get, you know, sparring with these guys, sparring with the current world champion, sparring with Dillian White, number one contender. And they're heavyweights as well. So, you know, it's it's harder. They they weigh more than me. I I feel more weight on the punches when I'm when I'm defending myself and stuff. So it, it gives me more confidence when I jump in the ring with the cruiserweights because they're a weight class lower, lower than the heavyweights. And it's like, you can literally feel the difference. You can really feel the difference with the, with the punch um, power, etc. I I hate, I hate asking questions that everybody asks, but who wins Joshua or Fury in your view? It's a, it's a tight one. It's a really tight one. You know, I'm close with Joshua, but I understand how good Fury is. You know, I, I've been studying, for a very long time and I was even it's funny I was actually whilst I had the injury Tyson Fury called me out to for, for a camp for the Wilder camp to spar with him but unfortunately I couldn't go along because because of the injury I was literally in the cast uh, which was a big shame you know I think I could have learned a lot from him but going back to the question it's a, it's a very tricky one Joshua is very he's very powerful very strong athletic and he's improving each uh, time and time again as you saw from the last fight versus Pulev and Fury he's just a freak of nature you know somebody weighing 20 odd stone and is able to shift their weight like a cruiserweight or or middleweight it's it's freaky so it's going to be it will be a competitive fight I, I believe it's a pretty much a 50-50 fight whoever turns up on the night whoever's got it there mentally and literally just goes for it. You know, the the best man will win on the night, I think, with that fight. But I'll I'll lean How? I'll lean to Joshua slightly, a couple percent. Um, do you get nervous? Yeah, of course. Of course. I think nervous are good. If I if I went into a fight or was in a lead up to a fight and I didn't get nervous, then I would be worried. You know, all of the top fighters in, in the past, they've said, like, for example, George Foreman, he spoke about how when he was in a fight, uh, Muhammad Ali, he was not nervous at all. And he feels like that worked against him. You know, when you have the nerves, it's like, you know, there's, there's a possibility that you could lose. So you're on edge and you know, you, you don't want to lose. Nobody wants to lose. So it, it gives you that, that, I don't know, that extra, that, that energy where, you know, it just it literally just comes from nowhere. It gives you that more energy to to train harder, to be more focused, take it more seriously, and push yourself to the limit. And I think nerves are really, really, really good. What about go, what about you standing there at the top of the ring walk? What, what are, are you? I mean, I watched I watched the, I think it was the Jack Massey fight when when Dillian was with you and he was talking to you, and it was just like you were just. It wasn't like. You know, you were, you were in your own zone. Are you nervous yeah. then, or, or what are you feeling then? I wasn't. I wouldn't say I was really nervous then because I kind of went over this whole ring walk and process in my mind time and time again. But it was just for me. It was just trying not to get distracted by the crowd. You have beautiful women to the left. You have your close friends to the right, <laughs> and you just <laughs> shout to the left of me. Go to. Your <laughs> Right here I am, stuck in the middle with you. <laughs> Brilliant. <laughs> so it's, it gets, it could get really distracting. You know, you might see an old face and you're like, oh my God, wow, you're here to support me. I appreciate that. Like, nice seeing you. But at the same time, you want to keep your laser focused because you're, you're about to go into war. So that's, that's the issue here. But I, I just kind of just block everything out and just focus. And if I have to, I'll just look to the ground. So. I don't have to lock eyes with anybody. What happens in the ring, though? Because, I mean, I talk to a lot of footballers and they go, oh, I can block out the crowd. You don't hear it. 
What about when you're in the ring? And I know you're totally focused, but can you hear Dillian shouting? Can you hear your corner shouting? Can you can you spot? I mean, they, they always say when 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 Joe Frazier knocked Muhammad Ali down at Madison Square Garden, he looked down and he saw Elizabeth Taylor. And he looked down and he, that's what his line was. He got caught by a, a punch, um, not well, knocked down. What about you? Can you can you block it all out or do you listen to it? I block it all out, but at the same time, I I keep an air out for certain people, certain individuals. For instance, if, if Dylan White is shouting some instructions, I would keep my ears open for him. If my coach is shouting some instructions, I would keep my air out for him as well. So everybody else, I would completely block out. And it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a skill. It's definitely a skill because you have people shouting all sorts and you can barely make out what some people are even saying. But it's just because you know the voice, it just resonates with you straight away. And you're like, okay, I've got that. Does it, does it hurt? Absolutely. When you get hit with the, the, the body shots, oh man, they're probably the most painful shots you can get hit with. Body shots and some shots to the face, it hurts and you feel it more after the fight because the adrenaline kind of helps to, to take away a bit of the pain, numb the pain a little. But once you, once you come through the ropes, then you, it's like hell just comes, comes raining down on you and you just feel all the aches and pains, all the sores in your body, all over your legs, your arms, taking a shot from the, on the forearm, etc. So, yes, it, it does hurt. What about, did, it happens so fast, everything's so fast. When you're in the zone, did, did, does it feel like it's slow motion at times, even though, you know, somebody's hitting you and whatever, does it, I've spoken to sportsmen, they say you kind of slow yourself down. I don't know if it's the same in that, in that position. I think for the first couple rounds, it is slow. It's like slow motion. The rounds take pretty long. They drag. It's like you can count the seconds. They're extra slow. But then after a while, the rounds just go past fast. Goes by fast. Bam. Round two, round. Next thing you know, you're on your last few rounds. And one thing I learned is that you train really hard. You go through a camp seven weeks, eight weeks, and then you get to the fight. And I always tell myself it's going to be fast, so I have to be on point. You know, the round is just going to go go by really fast. Before you know it, it will be the end of the fight. So I have to make sure that I'm on I'm on form and focus all throughout. What's that feeling like when you're absolutely knackered in the tenth round? You're absolutely spent, and they go, "Come on, you know, you, you, you're around behind, or you you need this." What What's that feeling like? It's horrible. It feels like. It feels like you have a brand new Ferrari and you're trying to get to a destination and you know you got another 100 miles. To, you know, you got got un, another 100 miles to cover and you're on E. You, there's, no, there's no gas, but somehow you have to do it. You have to get there. And it's like you're, you're summoning up this, this gas from elsewhere. Almost like you're feeding, you're, get, you're getting the gas from the crowd or from the family or maybe from just having a thought about your past and, and what you've um, had to overcome to, to be here. And it's like, that's how you connect the, that gas there when, when you're on E. So your mind is telling you you're spent, you're, you're done, but you have to just find it from somewhere. And I've been there, I've been there, like I've come out around, you know, and I've literally, I have nothing left, nothing at all. And I don't know what the hell I tap into to find it, to find some more, some more fighting me. As it's happened on numerous occasions, but they say it's one of the, it's an attribute that only certain fighters have. You know, they call it heart and will, courage. You know what I mean? And just, just going out there, and I, I'm, I'm happy to say I've got that, that attribute. I I mean, I know you, you, you train, you, you, you're unbelievable, you're dedicated, etc. How important is the mind in boxing? The mind, I would say, is, is the most important thing in boxing. Uh, the training, I would say, is probably around 10%. You know, mind is, is 90%. If you, don't, if you go into a fight where you're not confident that you're going to win, it would show in your body language. You can't hide it. 
you know, unless you're some brilliant actor, maybe Tom Cruise or something. <laughs> but you, you just <laughs> hide it. it. It would show. That's why they call it this, the, the square circle of truth. You know, they have these weird names for, for the boxing ring because what you do outside the ring, it shows in the ring. And that's the, the, one of the things that a lot of the, um, the fans love, love about the sport. You can't hide in there. There's no hiding. You know, if you haven't done the work, when it gets to the, you might look good for the first six rounds, but when it gets to the championship rounds, you're, you're going to be done. You're going to be gassed. And with the mind, that helps you to train harder. When you go in there and you kind of set your will to, to win a fight, it gives you that extra, I don't know, that extra energy to kind of put in into the session. Um, if you don't condition your mind um, and kind of condition your mind to know that it's, it's going to be a tough fight, you might go in there and it might be a shock to the body and throw you off completely off your game plan where you start to anticipate what your opponent is going to do instead of the, your own game plan. You're already losing. You know, that happens. Are you a fan? Are you, are you a fan of the sport? I mean, I, I've seen you've been to Cuba, you've been to Poland, um, training at different times. Are, are you a student of the game? Did you, did you grow up, you know, idolising fighters, watching fighters? Yes, of course. Uh, from the amateurs, I was watching all the Cubans and how they moved, how they made it look so easy. That's why I was in love with Cuban boxing. From That's what drove me to, to actually fly to Cuba. It's the Cuban boxing is, is, is number one for me. You know, the movement, how they make it look so easy, the rhythm, you know, it's just, it's just, it looks almost like they were born to box. And it's, it's, it's a beautiful thing. And it kind of just shows the, the art, the art of boxing. There's a lot of people, you know, a lot of casual fans, when they look at fighting, or if you, not even casual fans, let's say, like people that have never been into boxing before, they probably have this perception about boxing as being a, a, some crazy, rough man type of sport where you just have to fight and it's blood and gore. But there's so much science behind it. And to make it look easy when it's so difficult, that's an art in itself, you know, to express yourself in different ways. Uh, I kind of fell in love with that part of boxing. So I, yeah, hundred percent. I became a student and I studied. I studied pretty much all the different type of styles of boxing: the Soviet style, Cuban, American, um, the European, English, British. Yeah, I studied pretty much most of it. You, you, you're doing fantastically. Your career's on a massive up. Um, do you wish you do you wish you'd had an amateur pedigree? I mean. When, I, when I'm listening to the fights, the commentators go, oh, he's, got, he's had a great a amateur pedigree with uh, React Pause, you know, he's, he's, he doesn't say he's novice, but you've only, you know, you've had 11 pro fights. Do you wish you'd had that pedigree before? And can you accelerate it? Do you learn every day? Do you learn a, a new move, Do you, you know, a, a head movement or a, a, a different kind of shot or a foot movement? Yeah, absolutely. I, f I feel if I had the, the pedigree, I could have pushed on in my career much faster. I could have uh, probably achieved more, you know, if I went to the Olympic, you know, my whole pro professional career would have been probably, probably different up to now. Um, but you just never know. You never know because I've seen it actually work the opposite, in the opposite way. With yeah. certain fighters. I don't want to mention any names, but I've seen fighters that, that done excellently in the amateurs, but when they turned pro, they didn't even win a sub Southern area title. Uh, yeah. yeah let alone an English or, or British title. Um, so I feel maybe that was, that was probably a benefit for me, you know, where I, I just kind of had no choice but to perform. I had no choice but to find a way to win because who knows what would happen if I, if I don't get the result. Who knows um, if I would stage, so, yeah. Um, could you have played for Crystal Palace? And if you could have done, what, what position would you have been? And who, who would we say now, oh, he, he resembles him? Would you be like a Wilf? Or would you be like a, a centre-half? Or what would you be? I reckon I could have been a, a, a decent striker. I'm pretty nippy, very fast. And that was probably one of my, my gifts from, from a young age. I get a ball, I'm gone. 
and yeah, I think I would have I would have been I would have impressed because of my athleticism and my speed. I saw um, I saw on Instagram you chat you virtually challenged are you the fastest boxer on the track? You look pretty nippy to me. Has anybody taken up the challenge? Not yet, but I've actually challenged Dina Dina Asher Smith. And oh she, yeah, well, tell us about that. Yeah, I saw this. What was this all about? Go on. <laughs> so I, I challenged Dina Asher Smith, and she said she will beat me. She when she said it, there was no hesitation. I was actually shocked. But then she started to talk to me about the the training um, things that they they do to improve their movement. The the, the technique, etc., and it makes a lot of sense why she is so confident. Whereas me doing boxing, I haven't had any type of um, training to sprint. You literally have to condition yourself and your body to be able to sprint a certain way. And I asked her, well, what about if I had six months of straight training? So she said, she, I'll probably be able to compete. Brilliant. Second career. Here, another one for you. Um, what I was going to say, um, you've got your Adidas gear on there. You're, you're, a, you're an ambassador. Do, do you fancy yourself? It, it, the boxing, don't get the nose broken badly. Because the, the modelling, could, could, could modelling be a, another gear? To, I, saw, I saw, yeah, brilliant, yeah. And you see, that's why, that's why people always get interviewed by me, because I make everybody look good, let me tell you. Um, African Fashion Week, I saw you doing some work. Come on, are you interested in that? Could that be a new line for you? <laughs> you know, what? I, to be honest, I, Rob, I do it for fun. You know, it's all, it's all, it's fun and games. I get people that ask me to do gigs and if I feel like it, I'll do it. Sometimes I kind of, it's kind of a way of, of um, challenging myself, you know, stepping out of my comfort zone. I was uncomfortable to, to walk up a, a catwalk you know, ever, it, it, just the thought of it is just uncomfortable. But I just kind of find a way to, I like to challenge myself, you know, and yeah, I get a few bookings here and there. So, <laughs> yeah, if the, the modern probably could work there. You know, it's funny because um, I was talking to the director of marketing and they were, they were talking about how they really want to plug me into the, to the fashion side of, side of things. So you never know. Brilliant. Listen, you, sell, you talk about Dean Asher Smith there. Um, what do you learn from, I know you've, that some of the rugby lads, the England rugby lads were up at Loughborough. Then I saw Beef Johnson, uh, the golfer, who yeah. you were chatting to. What, what do you learn? And is there a crossover in your sports? What do you, do, can they teach you anything about, well, not about boxing, but anything that you need to know? And have you learned, have you taught them anything? I've learned a lot from them, to be honest. One thing I'll tell you, what I learned from from speaking to Dina and learning about the track is it's so much more advanced than the field of boxing, like by really? miles. Yeah, by Honestly. miles. Yeah, and when I say that, I'm talking about with regards to technology, um, watching back, you know, um, their movements and technique and drilling it again and again and doing different type of drills to perfect a certain way um to run um stabilizing the, the ankles um the building strength on the calf muscles so you have more balance more push uh, you could do the same thing with, with boxing and what kind of um kind of gave me that that insight was because we, we were watching a fight together and she said the guy's foundation is terrible his ankles were flopping over. Um, she said she was punching from the upper body, upper part of the body, whereas you should be punched from your hips and your legs. It should be that stable where the, the power's there, but because you're punched from the upper body, it's gonna exhaust you faster. And she knows all these things without even watching boxing. She doesn't normally watch fighting, but it's just because she knows about her field and she can literally integrate. She said he needs a lot of work, um, ankle stability, he needs, needs to build a lot of muscle on a calf. Yeah. So that when he steps in to, to punch, he's more stable, he has more balance and he has more power because there's more, more accuracy, more technique. Whereas if you're off balance and your ankles are flopping, you're leaning over and you're losing so much power 
from land to shop. It just it just gets channeled in a different way, if you know what I mean. So it, that was really really interesting. One of the the, the next key things, like speaking to Wade Vanier Kirk and um, Beef Johnson, it's it's the mindset that's that crosses over all sports, especially these athletes that perform at a high level, and they they're trying to protect you know, certain titles and stuff, they have this relentless mind. It's, it's like, it's war, pretty much. We're going to war. You know, if I'm training and I have a couple of my training partners with me, that's what the um, track athletes were saying to me. They would smack talk with the training um, partners so it can raise their game, so they can um, effectively help them raise their game. You know, and I thought, wow, that's so interesting. You know, mm. they do that a lot, especially in America. They they talk smack, you know, even in this during the sparring sessions, and it's just, but it's it's normal. That's just the way they they are there. Whereas in the, in the UK, everybody's silent. You know, it's pretty yeah. uniform. Everybody's just like focused on on doing one thing, but nobody, there's no big mouth there. Everybody's like quite respectful. So this, that, was, that was the kind of few things that I picked up. Um, can you cook? Yeah, of course. Of course. What's your favourite? What's your go-to? What's your go-to meal? And Dillian should have won Celebrity MasterChef. You should have told him. He should have, he should have won it. But I think he had some things going on in the background, so he had to pull out. <laughs> yeah. He can What's actually... Your Pardon? What's your go-to meal if you had to? If you were, if you were, if you were hosting a, a dinner party, whatever, what would you, what would you be serving up? One of my, one of my favorite dishes is is probably like a ribeye steak, peppercorn sauce, uh, asparagus, oh. Oh. rosemary potatoes, and stuff like that. I don't know, mix up. Yeah, that's 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 an easy standard one. But I have to. It is made with love. It's all made. <laughs> That makes the world go. Wrong. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, um, hang on. What else? What else is going? Go on. If cook, anybody could cook. Um, like I can let you cook something for me, but when it comes to the steak, I have to cook the steak myself, even if I was exhausted. Like because this, it's just a way everybody likes the steaks done. You know. So yeah. Are we talking barbecue? Are we talking in a pan? Pan, said. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, do you have to watch your diet, or do you sometimes think, "Oh, do you know, I just want a Chinese takeaway. I just want an Indian." I have to watch watch the diet because what you, you, get... you must you must fall off the wagon sometimes and go, "Do you know what? I want a I want a bag of cheese and onion crisps or something, or six bags." Absolutely, absolutely. You know, it, it, there's times where I want chocolates and and not. I'm not talking about good quality chocolates. I'm talking about cheap. Yeah. I mean, like Reese's and things like that. I can't help it. It's just really addictive. And there's, there's times where I would be addicted to, like, let's say, Terrell crisps, for instance, and I wouldn't be able to get off it. Sweet and sour Terrell crisp. I would eat that and it would be like drugs to my body. I wouldn't be able to just stop eating the crisp. I'll need to mentally prepare myself. <laughs> like for a week, I would go shopping, walk past the aisle, walk back around, walk past the aisle again, pick it up, put it down. And I have to literally set my mind to, to not eat it no more. And when I stop eating it, it's like, I forgot how it felt. So That's I'm, why the, it's the power of the mind. <laughs> <laughs> it really is. Well, um, how do you relax? I relax by, I relax by thinking about the achievement and how mm -hmm. how I feel if if I was to put myself in the future and imagine myself achieving the goal that that gives me the utmost the feeling of happiness and it just calms me down. I watch I just watch um, any series or film take my mind off everything. What you go to? What you go to series at the moment? What you what you binge watch? So I finished the Game of Thrones. I was really late starting that, but that was that was amazing. I can't um, get it. 
I try. I can't get it. I try my best. You have to. Once you just, once you learn about the Lannisters and the, <laughs> yeah, but there's some good, good characters. I'll tell you that. There's some good, good characters and there's some really interesting characters, really strategic, all about power mm. and, and strategy. Yeah, beautiful, beautiful series. One of the best I've seen. And you know, it's funny. I actually saw a guy called Fionn Lovejoy, which is a character in the Game of Thrones. That I went golf. I went to the to the O2 golf course, the drag course, and I saw um, Fionn there. That was weird. I felt like a fanboy. Like, are you... Um, <laughs> crazy but I heard this really? pardon yeah there's there's a, another series that I want to get into I think now is the perfect time um, considering the lockdown nothing's really happening I think the Vikings similar mm -hmm. to from the head is really good yeah um, I think some anime here and there I'm a bit of a big kid yeah are you a Peaky's fan I haven't, got, I haven't started that yet, but I heard a lot about it, to be honest. Yeah. I, no, more than decent. Well, I'm saying it's decent. It's brilliant. Oh, again. Hang on. Um, are you a warrior? Yeah. <laughs> what do you mean by a warrior? Are you... Well, what do you, do you worry? Do you sit there and... I don't know. Do, do you... I, I uh, mean... Do I, you worry about... What, okay, what do you worry about then? Yeah, that's a better question. Warrior. I thought you meant like uh, a soldier, like somebody that goes into battle. A warrior. No, well, you, no we know you're a warrior. A warrior. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, so um, a warrior. No, I don't, I don't worry. No. Come on, you must. Not in the middle of the night when you're lying in bed and all that and you, sometimes, you wake up and you, think, you don't worry about anything. I've not oh. paid the gas bill or, or I don't know, anything. You, you're not a warrior. There's been situations in my life where I have worried and then I realized that I can't, there's nothing that I can do to, I, all I need to do is just to focus on what I can control, you know, because it's a waste of energy. Yeah. That's what I tell myself. And I just take my mind off it. I just literally just drop the bag of weight, the bag of worry, literally. That's yeah. How I can. Will you do Love Island? Yeah. Because back to, to me being comfortable, being uncomfortable, <laughs> for that reason. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, um, do you know what? What's that? Thanks. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Thanks a lot. It's been, it's been brilliant. I mean, I, I, I've got a billion other questions, but I, honestly, I... Fantastic. I, I think your, your career looks your career looks great. Thank you. Just if you can just if you can just take it easy the next, you know, keep learning and learning. You, you, you're on a great path, my friend. I'll Thank keep you. my fingers crossed for you. Appreciate that. Appreciate that, Rob. Uh, we'll, be, we'll, we'll be following you with interest and um, stop worrying and don't worry. 